My name is Ryan Johnson. I grew up as a Jehovah's Witness until I was about 12 years old. My family and I steered away from that life when I was told I could not play sports. Then my life became about sports and sinful pleasures. I started smoking cigarettes and weed at a very young age to escape from things I could not control. I quickly became dependent on the both of them. I lived most of my early adult life drowning my pain and anger issues with cigarettes and weed. When I met my wife, I was still addicted to weed. Most of our relationship was built around my addictions. It wasn't until recently that I decided life should be about more than my addictions. I wanted to be the best husband and father I could be sober. My wife and I started discussing becoming foster parents and I knew things had to change. I slowly started attending church and building a relationship with God to help me overcome my weaknesses. I also provided, I also poured more into my fitness journey. Since, since committing myself to our Lord, I have a great sense of someone always having my back and whispering on the hardest days, this storm shall pass. Scripture helps me a lot also through my hard days. I've learned a lot about myself over the last year, and I've decided I wanted and will become closer to the Lord and commit my life fully to him. I know I will battle my demons every day, but having God on my side gives me the strength I need. I wanted to end on two of my favorite Bible verses that help me every day. Peter 5.8, be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. James 119 through 20. My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Hello, my name is Deacon Southworth, and this is my testimony. I've always gone to church and been surrounded by people who love God. I've always tried to live my life with Christ, but often found myself falling short. After church was done on Sunday, I'd rarely try to live my life with the new information that I learned on Sunday. It doesn't help that for a few years, I wasn't I was hanging out with people that weren't exactly the best. They weren't awful, but I could tell they weren't helping my walking with Christ. It wasn't until this year when I finally put my belief in him and trusted him with everything. With everything. I felt a, a joy that I had never felt before, even through the rough time my family has gone through in the past few months. He has given me more love for people and a new perspective on life. He has shown me all the amazing things he has given me and I, that, I had never, that I hadn't seen before. Because of this, I think about the Lord a lot more and have shared the Lord with more, peop- with more friends be- because I think about him more. I can o- and I can finally say I am fully ready to walk with the Lord for the rest of my life. This is my testimony. I want to be baptized because I want to show the world I love Jesus. I love God because he is a good, good father, and he loves me. He leads me in hard times. He comforts me when I am sad. He is always there for me. He never lets me down. He always forgives me. I like to talk to him about what is going on in my life, and he listens to me. If he wasn't not here to guide me, I might do bad things like bully others. Jesus died for me. If he didn't do that, I would have to take the punishment of what I do wrong. Jesus means life to me and a hope for heaven. I promise to always follow Jesus.
My story and discovery, and, or my story of discovery and pursuit of Christ is kind of long, but I grew up in a church and was always taught the importance of knowing Christ as my Savior. However, as I entered adulthood, I had zero interest in God or anything to do with Him. I spent many years running from Him. I had a lot going on in my life. I was an angry person. I was not afraid to fight anyone for anything at any time for any reason. I was homeless for a short stint, living under a truck at a car dealership I was working at. I turned to alcohol to deal with my problems. I spent 10 years with my head in a bottle trying to drink the pain away, ruining one of the best relationships I have ever had. I moved away, ended up going to church for the first time in years. It was during one of those services that I first experienced the inklings of needing God. However, I still rejected him and kept running away, but he was there with me and never stopped working in my life. I accepted Christ as my Savior during an Easter Sunday service. Two years after that, my faith was tested in the hardest way possible. Five years ago today, my 18-month-old son was taken to the ER with an unknown problem. It turned out that he had swallowed a small piece of plastic and his right lung was collapsed. He was airlifted to a different hospital that was better equipped to handle it. It should have taken a short 20-minute surgery to take care of, but three hours later we were told things got complicated during the procedure and the next 48 hours were gonna be crucial. During surgery, he flatlined for 20 minutes. The outlook was not hopeful. My son sadly passed away. Angry Brock was back. I was mad at the doctor. I was mad at his mom. I was mad at myself. I was mad at God. I could not understand how a supposedly loving God could allow something like this to happen. It was a tough time. God then sent me my wife, Shauna. God used her to show me where I was lacking and what needed to do and what I needed to do. She ended up bringing me to Cornerstone. After attending a couple services, God started really working on my heart. I was still angry at him, but I didn't want to be anymore and started to try and figure out how to forgive God. I presented this idea of trying to do so to Josh Simpson, one of the board members here. After a long conversation with him, a few days later, I broke down and asked God to show me how to forgive him. Immediately, a peace flooded my soul. It was unlike anything I had ever experienced. Since then, I've been doing my best to follow him and am currently learning how to hear and listen to him. I am blessed beyond measure. I have a great God-filled marriage and an absolutely wonderful family, a great job, and most importantly, relationship with God that is better than anything I could have ever hoped for. God understood why I was angry and never left my side. And when I had my prodigal son moment, he was there with open arms accepting me back into his family. I'm getting baptized today to signify the finality of my commitment to Christ and to follow him, the one who never left me the rest of my life. Hi, my name is Alicia Fasse, and this is my testimony. Before I came to Christ, I struggled really bad with anger, trust issues, and just always feeling alone, no matter who I was around. Um, at a very young age, I was abused, molested, and raped multiple times by babysitters and people my mom trusted with me. My dad and I never had met in person, only spoke on the phone, and his favorite saying was, I don't want you, it's not my fault, you're alive. My mom and I's relationship until recently was unfortunately toxic. Um, we argued and fought all the time, so because everything I had been through, I fought all the time as well. I would smoke and drink whenever I had the chance. I gave myself to the wrong person at 15 years old, which led to me giving myself to multiple guys over the years, thinking that was the only way to get the love I was looking for. I ran away from home multiple times, and if I would have continued down that path, I would have ended up in jail or maybe worse. I have came to the Vineyard Church since I was about 15, I mean, sorry, since I was about 17 years old on and off, but still struggled a lot with my anger and trust issues and still just feeling alone. When I was 19 years old, my boyfriend and I got pregnant with our daughter, Loveland, and we found out she has cystic fibrosis. Throughout her three years of life, she's had multiple surgeries. She's been on, she's on multiple medications, um, treatments, and a feeding tube that she has to get every day. There's been multiple times I thought we were going to lose our daughter, but Jesus brought her through it all. Um, then when we had our son, um, sorry, then when we had our son, 
uh, when I turned 21, he sent he spent two weeks in Indianapolis connected to a breathing tube, and I couldn't hold or even kiss him. Ever since we had our kids, we struggled with providing for them. We've lost our home in the past, and if it weren't for my mom, we could have been homeless. For a year and a half, we slept on her couch until last year when God blessed us with our home. I have an amazing supportive family, boyfriend, and two beautiful babies. I've always wanted a relationship with God, but was always too hurt or angry. Up until about five months ago, my mom and I still struggled with our relationship, but now we talk every week, we get along better, and I let her see the kids more when we both have time. When I was at church one Sunday, Pastor Matt had been preaching about those who may be filled with hurt and anger and felt like something was missing. I just started bawling and couldn't stop crying. So when he asked if there was anyone who wanted to give their life to Christ, I knew God wanted me at church on that Sunday for this reason. So I gave myself back to God. Since I gave my life back to Jesus, um, yes, I do still struggle, but now I am more aware of my anger is taking when my anger is taking control. I also am more, um, a lot more considerate, more willing to apologize and admit when I'm in the wrong. I also am always respectful to my mom now and have faith that we'll get closer. God has always helped me rely on him more and not try to completely control everything. My name is Blake and this is my testimony. Before I became a follower of Christ, I was selfish because I didn't have Jesus in my heart. When I was five, I repented for my sin. I knew, knew I needed Jesus in my soul. God led me to that point. I don't remember what day it was, but I was at home in the living room. Since I committed to Christ, I am brave and more loving. Because I have God in my heart, I used to be a silent player, and now I am a loud, a loud player. Before I was a follower of Christ, I was kind of a mess. I always had thoughts of harming or killing myself. At age 11, I gave my life to Jesus. It happened at the very first Cornerstone Baptism service. It came to me immediately. I, I experienced suicidal thoughts and realized my need for a Savior. I asked Jesus to be my Lord and Savior at that service. Jesus has helped me get rid of those bad thoughts. Jesus has given me freedom of my hives. God has also made a dream come true. Because of him, I have no bad thoughts, no hives, and two beautiful horses and I will follow Jesus the rest of my life. My name is Margie Neely, and this is my testimony. I was introduced to Christ at an early age because my dad was a pastor. I was three days old the first time I was taken to church, so church has been a part of my life all my life. I didn't officially accept Christ into my heart until I was nine years old, sitting in a Sunday school class, my teacher asked if anyone would like to ask Christ into their hearts, and I raised my hand. I was then excited to tell my parents what I had done. I had a tough childhood growing up, the youngest of four, 17 and a half years between me and my oldest sibling, my brother. I never was allowed to go to school dances or parties. My dad was very strict, so no proms, no anything like that for me, and it really made life miserable. Graduated from high school, Became a police officer, what I had always wanted to do. I stayed in Elkhart for three years, and I moved to Tennessee, where I joined the local sheriff's department. In October of 2000, my worst nightmare arrived. I was diagnosed with a brain tumor. It was there and then that my life changed forever. I had to have brain tumor surgery and found out that I had cancer. I was told then that my law enforcement career was done. I became addicted to narcotics because of my surgery, 
also began selling my drugs. Well, I sold to a fellow police officer's wife, and he told me if I left town, he wouldn't turn me in. So that's when I packed up and I returned back to Indiana. I remained on my drugs when I returned up here, hanging with a bad crowd of people and selling my drugs. I finally said, I can't do this life no more, and that was 10 years ago. I decided to seek help and treatment at that point. I then began attending church again and seeking God's will for my life. It was just finally a year ago when we were meeting at the school that I took that walk back into that corner and I prayed and rededicated my heart to Christ. The best walk I have ever taken, not getting baptized, is what I feel is sealing my deal that I truly belong to the Lord, no turning back.